Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow Earth travelers. Oblix here, coming at you today from Project Ozone Light. How y'all doing today? So, last time we worked on auto crafting with AE2, and you see these bits and bobs behind us that handle that mess. Today, I want to make use of that. So, last time we just kind of showed how it worked. Today, we're actually going to put it to work because we talked about two episodes ago the limitations of these drives specifically around item types so you see we're only using the first drive right now with all the garbage or gubbins we got up in here but as you can see you know, while we're using less than 20,000 items are, uh, yeah, there's less than 20,000 different, you know, bits and pieces in here. There's 35 types, so we're already over halfway to capacity on item types. So that is a severe limitation with these guys. Today, we're going to work up a way to get around that. And the way you get around it is with external storage. So we're going to be crafting lots of storage drawers. We're going to use those as external storage. Specifically, I want to do a lot of these compacting drawers. So anything that can be compacted, I want to put into a compacting drawer. So of course, that's all your metals. You know, so the osmium redstone can do it gold lapis certus quartz uh, you know heck even blaze rods uh, can be compacted in most packs though not in this pack uh, but yeah anything that can be we want to compress down to its larger form and what that's going to do is give us the block, the ingot, and the nugget in most cases where it's uh, ingots we're talking about. You know, of course, wheat turns into hay bales, uh, but it can also be wheat. So uh, we're going to build a whole bunch of these today. Uh, let's take a look at what is needed. So we're going to need smooth stone in large quantities. We're going to need cobblestone, wooden planks, iron ingots, redstone. Then, of course, we're going to need some drawer controllers as well. So, and then for this, we're going to need uh, chests and more planks. So, I see a bunch of planks in our future. Uh, now, I want to get a lot of these material into the system so that it can do the auto crafting. Now, I know I have a bunch of wooden planks, or a bunch of wood anyway, over here in the red dome, in a drawer already. So, I think I'm going to use. We have a lot of this, we have a lot of that, a lot of that. But a whole lot of this and this stuff if I remember right yep turns into jungle wood so that's what we're gonna use so let's get rid of this other nonsense yeah 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 we're just gonna go with rubber wood in large quantities da, 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 da. there we go so that'll give us our wood Now, I don't have to turn it into planks. I just have to get it in the system. Because once it's in the system, I can teach it how to make a plank. I can switch over to 
crafting mode. And if I take one and turn it into planks, now why you only get three? Now that's kind of a ripoff, I gotta tell you. So maybe we will use the other ones. I didn't realize you only get three out of that. That's a daggum joke. Ah, oh, what the heck? We're gonna. We got a ton of it anyway, so who cares? Not like we're gonna use it for anything else. So we're gonna use the rubber wood. It's gonna make three planks. Encode it. And because it's a crafting recipe, we're gonna or a crafting table recipe, we're gonna throw it right there. Now we're gonna teach it how to make a chest. So of course I'm clicking in the wrong one. We need to be up here. We want to use we want to allow substitutions and probably need to make a couple more planks. We'll have it make 20 of them real quick because I want to show it how to do it. And encode. Now allowing or dictionary substitutions means it can use any planks, not just the ones that we have there. And we're going to pop that in there. So now it knows how to make a chest. Now we're going to teach it how to make a drawer. So this is most definitely jungle plank, so it's going to be a jungle drawer. Jungle wood planks to a jungle wood drawer. Oh, we're going to have to make a chest first. Good thing we taught the system how to do it. So make a chest for us, please. Thank you very much. We're going to pop our jungle wood in there. Boom. Encode that. And we're going to pop that in there. Now the system knows how to make drawers. So now we need to teach it pistons. So let's see, do I have any smooth stone? Probably not. Let's see if we got some over here in this system. Not a whole lot. I'm going to have to cook some up. But we'll get some in there to at least get us started. And I don't think we have any cobble either definitely have a ton of cobble in this system. So let's get a bunch of cobble in here. And teach it how to make a piston. So we're going to come up top. Piston, craft, encode. So let's pop that in. Now that we've made these, we've made these, it has this and it has this, so we should be able to teach it how to make. We're going to have to go ahead and make two so it can do the recipe for us. And we're going to have to make one of these drawers. So it needs enough to build out the recipe. There we go. Now we can encode. There we go. We've now taught it. This is how to make a compacting drawer. So if we come over here and say, make compacting drawers, I want 30 of them. Ah, you see we're missing iron. I've got 87. I need one more. 
in order to be able to make 30 compacting drawers. So let's get some iron. Iron. I don't need feathers. I need iron. There, that should be more than enough. Can we do 40? Oh, we're missing smooth stone. We definitely can't do 40. But we can, should be able to do 30 just fine. Yep, plenty. So if we say start, we see it's trying to do 30 up there. And we see all the little bits and pieces crafting over here. See planks and pistons there. Planks and more pistons here. And it's, of course, filling up this 64K crafting storage buffer. So it's made two. Oh no, it hasn't made any yet. It's still uh, storing planks as it builds up. Just cruising along. Still making a whole bunch of chest and drawers and planks. That's really cool to be able to watch it do that though. This is something that is different with refined storage. You know, the, the way it auto crafts, uh, refined storage is pretty much invisible. It just kind of disappears in the background. Um, but with AE2, it is kind of neat to be able to see it, though it's also kind of a pain too. <laughs> so a little double-edged sword there. Uh, but now we're starting to process the final product. You can see those showing up in here, in these two, and there it is, done. So we've now got our 30 compacting drawers. Boom. Awesome. Now I'm going to want a whole bunch more than 30. Uh, so let me make up a whole bunch of those. I'm also going to have it make up a whole bunch of spruce drawers as well. So I'm going to code some patterns for that. Let's go and do that real quick. Which I need to get some spruce in here. I need to teach it how to take spruce. Got to make sure I use the regular spruce and not the fancy spruce. So let's get those dropped in. I want to make sure it understands how to make spruce wood out of, or how to make the planks out of the wood. Uh, remember, we taught it jungle wood, but this time we want to teach it spruce and we want to prevent substitutions because we want it to remain spruce. We don't want it to mix jungle in. So we'll add that and encode it. Then we're going to add. It already knows how to make the chest. We don't have to reteach it that. Uh, let's go ahead and make another chest. A couple of them. Now these it can pull from the jungle for. It, that's fine. Because it's just going to come out to be a basic Minecraft chest. It's not going to be you know, anything specific. And I'm going to teach it how to make regular drawers. And do I want to do the one by twos or maybe even the two by twos? I don't think I want the two by twos, but I might want the one by twos. Let's have it encode that as well. So we're going to pop those in. Sure, try to split these up as much as I can. I'm really limited by the amount of machines I got here. But now you can see we can craft uh, individual spruce. Yep, got plenty to do it. Individual spruce drawers there, so there it goes. Making all the uh, chests it needs. First things first. 
Let's see it's storing them up. And it's turning the jungle wood into planks and then crafting chest. Now it's going to keep on trucking with the spruce planks. Done. And now it's going to merge them both together. And there we go. All the spruce is done. We got a bunch of spruce drawers. Fantastic. So I'm going to keep crafting these and I'm going to get these laid out here in the floor. Uh, we will need some controllers. Uh, to do that, we already know how to make drawers. We don't know how to make comparators. So now it knows how to make a comparator. Let's get some sticks. I'm going to teach it how to make redstone torches. So, there we go. Oh, that is making a redstone torch. you got to remember to click on the right machine, man. That catches me out every time. Alright, teach it how to make a redstone torch. And let's also, while we're here, teach it how to make a stick, just in case. And I am going to use the Ore Dictionary on sticks, so it can grab from any wood that's available. And then we just need the drawer controller, but we're going to need a couple diamonds. Oh no, wait, we need it. We have the diamond. We need a comparator, don't we? So... If I switch to just craftable items, oh, we haven't put them in yet. We've got to put them in over here before it can find them. So there's comparators, there's torches and sticks. So we're in craftable items, so we can find our comparators real quick and easy. Let's get two of them crafted. And if we switch back to Uden, I do like to go sorted by number of items. I don't know. Everybody has their own flavor on how they like things sorted. I like them this way. So like for my drop to work. What the heck, man? Why is this not working? Hello? Weird. Okay, working now. Just wanted you to pull something out first, I guess. Uh, so there's our two comparators. Fantastic. So we're going to teach it how to make a controller because I'm going to need several controllers. Of course, I just made one because, again, I clicked on the wrong one. I tell you, I do it every time. It's just a thing. I don't know why. There we go. So now we've taught it how to make a controller. So in the event I want to make more of those, I've now taught it how. Now a controller can push items 12 blocks out. So from wherever the controller is, it can go 12 drawers out, regardless if they're the 2x2s, the 2x1s, or the 1x1s doesn't matter it just can go 12 in any direction 12 up 12 out 12 at an angle it's just 12 so you want to make sure you you have a controller if you if you're putting them in line like this and it's just going in a straight line no more than 12 that way or 12 that way no more than 12 tall between controllers so make sure you have enough controllers so let me get a whole bunch of these in place and then I'll bring you back and show you how we're going to connect them to this system. So quick update, while my machine is crafting away some more drawers, I've got a whole side of compacting drawers in and got a frame laid out and then got storage controllers around. I've got one there on this face, I've got one on this face, and one on this face right there. So there are 11 drawers out from the controller on each side. So I've got 11 there and 11 there. 
I wanted to keep it uh, with a center post. I didn't want to go with an even number of 12. And there were five tall, so there's 110 drawers on this side, and there'll be 110 on this side. Or on the back. I haven't decided where I'm going to stick these yet. These are the it's crafting the one by one drawers now. So, um, but that's a little quick update. We'll keep going, filling in these other sides. All right, quick update. Finished crafting those 55 drawers and laid them in over here. And I don't like it. Uh, it's too much brown. I like this a lot. I like the contrast of the kind of beige colored with the brown and the gray. Uh, but this is just not doing it for me. Um, yeah, that's just not going to work. So we're going to need to make gray drawers. But you're like, oh, Lex, drawers don't come in gray. How you know? Other than the, you're just going to make a whole bunch of commander drawers? No, I'm not. Uh, I will show you a drawer trick. So we are going to need to go to the mod drawers, not just search drawers. And I'm going to need to build this, the framing table. So I'm going to need some trim. Let's get that and get this table. Boom. We're just going to lay that bad boy down right there. Now let's go back in here and I'm going to build some of these framed drawers. Now they come in the one bys, the one by twos, the two by twos, and of course the little ones, which no one ever uses those. But uh, I want to build 55 of these guys. Now it's a little different recipe. This one calls for sticks instead of planks. Pretty sure I'm not going to have 55. Yeah, I didn't think so. Did not think I would have 55 chests. Uh, so let's close these out. And some planks. I'm going to add that as a crafting recipe just so I can do these a bunch of times if I need to. Now let's get back into these. Let's grab a bunch of them real quick. Oops. All right, one extra. So if we pop these into the into the table you see they show up here in the middle now they're pretty cool because you can make them look you can make drawers look like any block you want like if I wanted a coal block drawer I would pop the coal block in and you get a drawer that looks like a coal block uh, this box here see how it's kinda of pointing to the outside shell tells you what the shell is going to be then you can take any other block, like say if I take this dream wood for example, and sky stone for example. You see how this block is pointed at the drawer itself? If I say I want the drawer itself to be sky stone, now I have an exterior, uh, exterior of coal and an interior of sky stone. This one kind of points towards this trim around the edge. So if I put that there, you see we now get dream wood on the trim all the way around. That's it. You can do it with any block you want. Oops, clicked on the wrong thing. So if I just want to do that, we could do that. So you can kind of come up with whatever color drawer you want. Now if I pull this drawer out, uh, you know, if I pull this drawer out, it is going to consume the frame and the blocks. So now we permanently have a dream wood drawer with a sky stone face. So we did use up a trim and we used all of our blocks. So 
just be aware it will consume those. Um, but no matter what you make it out of, even if it's obsidian, it still appears to be wood, so you can knock it with a axe or hatchet or whatever. But I think I'm going to make some... Since these guys are in essence made out of smooth stone, you see they have that smooth stone texture with kind of a dark trim. Let's see if we can come up with that. So we're going to pop that in and we're going to pop the smooth stone in. Now that gives us the nice smooth stone texture, similar to what we have over there, but it's it's probably a little not as smooth as I would like it. Let's see if we can smooth that out at all. It's definitely not going to be that. Perhaps polished. Oh, but we get this weird little dimple in the middle. Huh. What's up with that? Very peculiar. What if I put another one here to try to knock it out of the drawer? No, it doesn't. That's weird. The block doesn't have the dimple, but the drawer gets the dimple. That is pretty much the right texture. See there? Hmm. I don't like that dimple in the middle. So let me play with these for a few minutes and see if I can figure out what's going to give us the best look to kind of match those drawers. So I'll be back with you shortly. All right, I've gotten trodden brick and basalt as a trim. That's pretty close. The trodden brick is a little too dark and a few too many lines going through. There's a pretty good looking drawer though. The basalt is definitely right. The trim, you know, the basalt trim is is right where we want it to be. We just got to match the center a little better. So let me keep looking. All right, sky stone is the polished sky stone. It's a little too dark. And a site. It's slightly too dark as well and has a little too much of this kind of greeny beige color in it. Still on the hunt. So light gray concrete is probably the closest thus far. But is really more almost a brown color. Yeah, it's got almost like a newspapery brown color to it. And its complete lack of texture really draws away from the block. Yeah, we just gotta find something that's a little closer. Hmm, let me keep looking. Let's see. We've got light gray hardened clay. And it's got that kind of same browny color again, just like it does regularly. The cyan clay has always been a little more gray. And that's a pretty good fit, texture-wise, but it's just too dark. Hmm. It fits this kind of inner trim a little better. Yeah, it's not a bad match for some of these inner trim blocks, but it's just not a match for these, I mean, for this uh, edge block. But it's not a match for the center section, which is really, you know, what you see when you look over there. You see these dark black band and then you see these really light sections hmm <laughs> let me keep looking see if I can find anything better but that may be where we have to go all right on a whim I tried light gray wool and you know the color wise not bad it's pretty darn close I think there's a little too much texture in there compared to what we have over here but Given how much darkness is at the bottom of these, it might actually work. Hmm. There is a lot of texture in there. You know, let's go ahead and pull one out and see what we can do with it. Let's just pop it in here. And see what our eye thinks of it when we're looking at it at a distance. That's not terrible. That is not terrible. That may be the closest we can get. The basalt is 100%. That's spot on. It's the gray we're really struggling with. 
I wish I could just mute that just ever so slightly and I would be very happy. But I think that's what we're going to have to do, which means I'm going to have to go get a whole boatload of wool. Which means the mining dimension. Is there are sheep galore in there. So, let's see. Let me make sure I don't have a ton already. Yeah, I'm going to need a lot more wool than that. So, let me go mortify about a bajillion sheep. And then I'll bring you back. Aw, oh, looky here. The chance cubes have hearts on them now. Closing in on Valentine's Day. Oh, you just have to pop that one, don't we? You tried to murder me, you jerk. But hey. Thanks for the sand. I tell you what, you want a quick way to get wool. In this pack, anyway. Use some of these uh, shears of the winter. In the mining dimension. And a magnet. And you can just dri do drive-by woolings. Which is awesome. Just do do do. <laughs> just find you a little pack of sheep. <laughs> you're gonna get a little grass seed and stuff while you're at it, but that's okay. <laughs> Look at all that wool I got so fast. It's awesome. Even a little hard to get in it. You know, ones in little hard to get areas just snatches it right off of them. Then you got a bunch of naked sheep running around. Oh, you thought you was going to get away, huh? Nope, not going to happen. You get a lot more wool this way than you would if you uh, were to, you know, kill each one of them. Uh, it, it will trim the trees for you, too, so, you know, that's the thing. Yeah, as long as you got your magnet, you're good to go. Oh, it works on grass as well. Now, here's a little trick I learned a while ago. When you're using doing scaffolding, you know you're going to tear out. Use a block like coal or redstone or lapis or diamond that uh, when you tear it out, you're doing double work. This saves yourself some time. And I totally forgot to put the basalt on these. I just made a whole bunch of these without the basalt. Oblix, you dummy. And I don't think I can do it after the fact. Great. Okay, let me make a whole bunch more of these. Yay! So yeah, just an update. You can't reuse... You can reuse the frame, but you can't reuse the items you know that you put into the frame. So I am having to put more... Uh, the light gray wool in there to get out the drawers we specifically want. So yeah, don't be an idiot when you're building your drawers so you don't waste your materials. Uh, but what that coal allows you to do is, when you're done, just rip it out. You get all the coal and you got rid of that ore. Yeah, it's just a easy way to process your ore without actually spending a lot of time processing your ore. You know, you're processing it as you go along building other things. Well, that's not where that goes. And we're almost done with this section. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad. I can definitely live with that better than I can live with the spruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me keep on trucking, building out these other sections. All right, we got all the drawers in place. Got the one buys over here, and the one by twos over here, along with all our compacting drawers from before. Now, I want to show you how to connect them to our ME system here. We're going to go over here to the controller. Now I did put in a stack of sugar cane just so we have a point of reference. So there's 64 in there. 
We're going to come over here to our controller, and I've already pre-run all the cables, you can see, to all the different sides. We're going to pop that. We're going to use these ME storage buses. They're relatively easy to make. I've already set an autocraft for them. It's just sticky pistons and an interface, and we've made the interface yesterday. So we're going to pop this guy right there on the bottom of the drawer. And you see this little spot right here, how it's black. Once it's connected to the network, that's going to turn a purple color. There you go. So that tells you it has been connected, and it's ready to go. So I'll just pop that back in. Now we should see there was no sugar cane in the system before. We should now see sugar cane, and there we go. So I've already pre-set up the other controllers. You can see there. And the one over here is already pre-set up. So what I'm going to do now is toss in some items just so we can see that they're working. And I'll purposefully go into the furthest drawer away. So as you can see, wheat does compact into hay. There isn't any in our system, but there should be now. And then I want to put these seeds right there. So a stack of each. So I should see seeds now, of course sugar cane, 64 wheat, and some hay. You know, should see uh, seven hay bales. So let's take a look. We come in here, there's our wheat, sugar cane, seeds, and even hay bales, all showing up from these storage drawers. So that's how you get around the limitations of these disk drives. It allows you to put a whole bunch of stuff into your storage system without consuming a whole bunch of disk drives. So between now and the next episode, I'm going to start moving things into here. Uh, so this system will have access to a lot of items. We'll move all our ores over into our compacting drawers. All the things we want to keep a whole bunch of over here into these big drawers. And all the little nonsense we don't care about keeping a whole bunch of, like seeds for example, we'll move over here into these drawers. So we can set up upgrades in all our drawers, uh, as well as void upgrades so that we won't uh, overproduce items. But I think that is all the time I got for today. But I sure do appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me, as always. And until next time, get out there and make some noise. See ya!